After two and a half years of excruciating ups and downs, and just a week after being victimized by that cruel hoax in Nicaragua, Natalie Holloway's parents were about to be thrown another bombshell the biggest yet. An elaborate hidden camera sting in the Netherlands, arranged by Dutch reporter Peter de Vries, caught Uran van der Sloot on tape with a man named Patrick who had gained his trust. Van der Sloot not only said he was with Natalie when she collapsed on a beach, but that he had a friend with a boat get rid of her body. For Dave Holloway, watching the show was the most painful moment yet. It was a good thing he hit, there was an ocean between us and Holland, because I would have come after him. Though the tape was difficult to watch for Natalie's parents, it seemed to confirm many things they have believed all along. First and foremost, that Uran was with Natalie and had something to do with her disappearance. I wanted to come through the TV and kill him. I wanted to peel his skin off his face. Second, that her body was indeed dumped at sea. You know, I think there's a lot of truth in it, and I think it validates what we've been wanting to do for the last couple of years, and that's search that water. But for Natalie's mother, there was something else about the tape that was particularly revealing. On the tape, Uran Vandersloot says all of a sudden it was like a scene from a movie. The way Natalie was moving, shaking his friend asked, yes, he answered. When Beth heard Vandersloot describe what happened, she said it not only made sense, it confirmed to her what she had believed from the start. The facts are, within 48 hours of Natalie's disappearance, a lead detective asked me if she had a history of epilepsy or seizures. Two and a half years later, the main suspect himself even imitates how she's shaking. So if we look at just that one piece out of a lot, I'd have to say yes. There definitely was some collusion and corruption going on in the early days of Natalie's disappearance. However, according to the prosecutor's office, it's standard procedure to ask if a missing person might have a seizure disorder. Police and prosecution officials declined on-camera interviews, but have consistently denied that there was any corruption, collusion, or mishandling of the investigation. The director of Aruba's Hotel and Tourism Association says everyone wishes the case was given more urgency in the first 48 hours but says police wrongdoing was certainly not an issue. In fact, quite the opposite. Uh, you know that our island is very focused on tourism, so um, we've put a tremendous amount of effort into uh, solving this case. Millions and millions of dollars uh, from our police budget have been focused on nothing but uh, bringing resolution for the family. Here in Vandersloot, and the Calpo brothers insist they had nothing to do with Natalie's disappearance or death. And when it comes to that videotape, Vandersloot claims he was lying, impaired by marijuana. After the hidden camera footage aired, prosecutors sought to arrest Uren Vandersloot again. But judges denied the request. For two courts to deny his rearrest shows you the value, evidentiary value, of this tape, which is none. Joseph Takapina is Vandersloot's attorney. Your own story. Uh, over the 20 hours that he was taped is disprovable by fact, um, disprovable uh, in its inconsistencies internally, um, and, and, and incredible because he was under the influence of narcotics when he was making those statements. Tonight, after the Holloway family has gone through nearly three years of anguish, the persistence is still off the coast of Aruba looking for Natalie. And organizers are now appealing to the public for donations to keep the search going. And Natalie's father, who's lived through all the ups and downs, somehow finds a way to remain hopeful. That search will continue. They have the capability to find something as small as a quarter on the ocean floor. I mean, that's how sophisticated this equipment is. Today, Natalie Holloway would be 21 years old, a junior in college, phoning home to chat about friends or boys or maybe a biology test she'd aced that afternoon. Instead, she is gone. Her final resting place, a mystery. And so her parents keep searching, hoping that somewhere off the coast of Aruba, a boat called The Persistence may bring them an answer and peace. If she's there, they'll find her. If they don't find her, we did. We did the very best we could do. No question about it. 
For more on the Natalie Holloway case and links to information on the search, visit our website at dateline.msnbc.com. That's all for this edition of Dateline. We'll see you again next Friday. I'm Chris Hansen. For Ann Curry and all of us at NBC News, good night.